So I came to China six years ago, and um, uh, at that time, I just graduated. I studied in Ukraine and in Netherlands, and um, I really wanted to go somewhere, to go to some country where I have never been before with like a really different culture. And uh, well, that was my main reason why I came here. I found one volunteering uh, project and uh, I moved to Guangzhou, which is um, the city north of Hong Kong. Um, it's a very interesting actually city and very interesting area, basically like most of this uh, made in China, it actually comes from there, from the South. Um, yeah, so it was really cool um, to be there. And um, after volunteering, I studied Chinese as well and uh, worked there. And then I, um, with the help of actually China admission, I um, applied for Beijing Foreign Studies University and did masters in there. Um, so after that, I um, started basically like a few months after I graduated, I started my uh, job uh, at the company where I work now. Um, so basically what we do, uh, we create, plan, create, and implement uh, security systems for provinces, for cities. Um, it can be for other big companies. And the company is actually really, really big. And uh, for example, um, when you use Subway in China, you have to do a security check. Or actually in any international airport, you also have to do this. So like the probability that uh, it's done by our company is actually very high. Um, yeah. It's kind of also one of these big pluses, uh, like li living, working, studying in China that uh, you do with the companies um, whose work you can actually see everywhere around the world. Um, about the um, uh, differences in working in China, um, I think when you start working here uh, in any company here, uh, work is kind of number one. That's how they say it. And uh, I've met so many people who actually really mean it. So like they have little personal life and all they do, they just work and work and work. And uh, it's very unusual to me. Um, and it's also really tough. Um, so you should be ready for this kind of thing uh, that sometimes uh, people will be demanding more from you when even like in your free time, like on, on the weekend and so on, which is not actually really something nice. Um, another thing that is really important here is uh, your personal relations. Uh, for example, uh, when I started working in the company, it's also one of the um, cool things actually in China. Um, so I, at that time I was, I think, 25, or 26, I don't remember, but um, I had a really good relations with my boss. And because of that, I was able to go to really like random countries for the projects, um, like Sierra Leone or Lebanon, Brazil and so on uh, for like real projects that were happening in there. And actually at that time, I didn't really have a proper experience to do that. But nevertheless, I actually went there and I learned new things and it was actually great. I mean, we, we met ministers and uh, um, I mean, just like the countries themselves were awesome and projects were great. And I think it uh, can actually happen in China quite um, often that uh, even if you're young, um, they kind of give you the responsibility that uh, companies in other countries would never give you. Uh, so it's definitely a huge advantage. Um, yeah, and uh, as for like, some advices, I, well, I definitely agree with the previous panelist, uh, Ivan Su, um, that uh, it's better to know more about China than to know less, just because China is the second biggest economy. Uh, it's not an easy country to be. Um, there are lots of challenges here and all, but you definitely have like an opportunity for your personal growth. Um, Chinese is important. Uh, Chinese dominates in China, especially like in Chinese companies. So even though you definitely can get around here just speaking English, like many foreigners do, but then you just live in your bubble. I think in any case, even if you speak very good Chinese, you end up living in somehow like a foreign bubble because the cultural gap just is just so huge. Uh, but it's still very important to speak Chinese well when you work for a Chinese company. It's, it's just important. Nobody would care uh, if you don't speak. And another thing is that um, um, there's so many uh, technological innovations 
uh, in China. Basically, everything changes here all the time, which is really cool because I've been living in Beijing for like four years and the city really changes, like people's attitude changes. For example, I remember the first time I came to Beijing, um, the subway was a mess. But now people actually wait in line before they board the trains. It's still like not ideal, but this happens and it's a real change. Um, like there's so many like things with, like, with the shared bikes and so on and so on. Um, yeah, so one of the things uh, I would definitely um, suggest is um, to actually look more into this uh, tax fair of China. Like there's so many awesome and interesting startups with very interesting ideas. And in general, the society here is very um, strong. Like the, the entrepreneur's spirit is very strong in here. And it's one of the reasons why China is the second biggest economy. And uh, this is definitely something worth uh, learning about. Yeah, and I see many people were asking about scholarships. Uh, well, I bet you guys can help with that, but I think now it actually can be a good time uh, applying for Chinese scholarships because I bet like, uh, because of coronavirus, Chinese government would be helping a lot. And uh, here also one of these like specifics of China is that the government, the central government uh, actually really helps a lot financially, like lots of, things what they, they do are really not right uh, uh, many things that happen here are pretty sad actually but uh, uh, on the other hand lots of things what they do are actually great and they definitely support um, the companies Chinese companies and um, if they set a goal for example like having more foreigners here they I'm sure they will achieve that whatever goal they set 